There we go. All right. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning out on the West Coast here. Uh, I see a, a number of people piling in. Zoom always takes just a minute here to be able to get everyone on. Uh, I'm Jeff Johnson here with uh, Big Red Media Technology Marketing Toolkit and MSP Success Magazine. And looking forward to this call that we've got today. Real, real great call. Actually, second time that, that Franz has been on the uh, MSP Success webinar series, I believe, uh, here. But I was out of the country last time, Franz. So uh, you were with Mark Sheehan last time. Uh, here. So I'm really looking forward to this call. A couple things that I would say just, just from a start as we've got those that are starting on the call here is that we will have this a, as a very interactive call. If you do have questions, then make sure that you use the Q&A button versus the chat uh, here. So if you're watching this call live and we'll have it on recording as well, post it up. But if you're watching it live, then use the Q&A uh, button. That's just easier for us to be able to track those and watch those and there's a number of us that are watching after them uh, here. And then secondly, if you, if you just have any questions or uh, things that you, or just comments, I would say more than that, then feel free to use the chat. And, and here's what I'll, I'll just get the chat started a little bit with it is, uh, when you post of where you're listening in from today, we'll see if we've got a uh, international crowd uh, out here in the audience and it, i always like to see of where you're listening in from so go ahead and just post that in the chat uh to get that going so we've got franz transnati uh franz is uh and i don't even remember when i first met you franz it's it, it's been a long time probably at least 10 12 years uh going back the the first time that i met franz he's been an accelerators club member producers club member uh he is a cybersecurity expert uh, we were talking before on this and going back a number of years at, at boot camp, uh, Robert Hershebeck was there and he was saying, one of you guys out in the audience here uh, just, just won a deal from me. And it, it, it wasn't quite the full story of it. That was Robert's uh, Hollywood version of it. But uh, it was actually Franz there that was going head to head multiple times with the shark, uh, Robert Hershebeck on a cybersecurity deal. Uh, in Southern California that they were working. And so not only that, uh, there with, with going head to head with sharks, which is impressive enough. I've got a couple of these that were just emailed in to, to me today here uh, of people that saw that I was, I was gonna be working with uh, Franz on today's webinar. Uh, Eric Williams, Eric's an Accelerators Club member. He said, we were just a great MSP now teaming up with the team at CyberX. Uh, we really are an MSSP. And that's one of the things that I hear so often is uh, around wanting to become an MSSP. And how do I do that? Chris Green emailed me as well. Chris is about 150 person MSP, so a larger MSP uh, here. So the security audit was a complete success. We received great praise from the auditor. This was no small part to do uh, of us choosing CyberX company wide. We're pleased beyond words with the performance of the Cynet product and the CyberX team. We would gladly sing the praises of Cynet and CyberX. This product is a clear best of breed winner. So awesome stuff that I got just actually in my inbox this morning from those that saw that I was going to be speaking with Franz today. So without further ado, that, that, that's a pretty good intro, of, uh, Franz, of going up against the, uh, up against the shark there. So. Uh, Looking forward to, to, to what you have here of really being able to differentiate your MSP business uh, amongst the crowd and being an LA based MSP yourself or that that's your origin of it. Uh, I know you really know of uh, the, the need to differentiate and, and it's really out there for everyone. So why don't you take it away? All right, Jeff, thank you so much for the intro. Everybody, uh, thanks for your time. Your time is very valuable. Uh, I, I really enjoy uh, giving back to the community and to my fellow uh, MSPs. Um, yeah, here in, in, in LA, I mean, you can you'll travel on the freeway for uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes, and I'm sure you'll pass at least, um, I would say a good 50, 60 MSPs, um, and you're not even across town yet. So it's a very, very highly competitive market and love to share with you guys to see what's been uh, working for us. And hopefully you guys get a couple tips today to be able to differentiate yourself. Um, let me go ahead and uh, just get started real quick with, uh, um, with, with what, what you're going to be getting out of this uh, webinar today. Let me 
So uh, Roy's going to join us as well, and he's um, he's with Cyber. He's with uh, Cynet. Um, I'll go ahead and do the intro with him later today. Uh, what you're going to get out of today's uh, webinar is um, I'm going to sh share some of the uh, strategies that our MSP um, Intellisys use to to really differentiate ourselves um, from other MSPs. Um, again, here in, in LA, it's so competitive. Um, not us, but we've we we've met other MSPs where there were two or three MSPs in one building in one high rise. So, um, how are you going to differentiate yourself from uh, an MSP across town? Um, the other one is we're going to show you how to get access to a comprehensive security stack. Do you really have the time to meet with eight, nine different vendors, vet them, and um, um, get get your staff trained on them? And um, we can we can show you how to easily have access to a comprehensive security stack. Uh, the other one is uh, at the end you're going to get to uh, you're going to have the opportunity to make a choice. All right, so uh, we've got some uh, some amazing. Um, offers uh, for TMT and for uh, uh, attendees of this webinar. But first, um, uh, give you guys a little overview. You guys don't know who I am. Uh, some some might, some don't. So I'll share a little bit of background of that. Like I mentioned, I'll do a, a quick experience share on uh, what's worked for us. And um, the last one is a uh, uh, last few. We're going to talk about the platform and then um, uh, leave you with some tips on selling um, MSPs and uh, how to package and price uh, cybersecurity offerings. All right. So, uh, who the heck am I? Right. Well, I am like most of you guys. I own an MSP, and um, I I try to uh, join uh, a few peer groups. And um, one of the ones that I was a part of, I was part of Producers Club, and um, I did a. I've, I've had several pivots in my company. And um, uh, a more recent pivot uh, led me down the path of uh, accelerators. Uh, Accelerator was a better fit for me. Amongst that, I also belong to a couple others as well uh, and really enjoyed meeting with other MSPs. All right, uh, what else? So on, a, uh, on the personal side, I've, I've been married to my wife, Jenny, for over 17 years. Um, there she is. Uh, we have two boys, uh, 10 and 12. Uh, if I'm not working, I try to spend as much time as uh, I can with them. The, the time, time just flies, as some of you might know. All right, so I started Intellisys in 2010, and shortly thereafter, I bought the toolkit. And, and like maybe some of you, it kind of sat there for a while. Um, and during that time, I started Intellisys as a voice over IP a service provider. Um, and I shortly, uh, soon after, I, I realized that's not what I wanted to do. So my first pivot was uh, to get into IT, and I acquired an IT company in 2013, um, not knowing really anything about IT. And um, it was a break-fix company. Uh, so that's when I got more involved in 2014, joined Producers Club, turned that break-fix company into more of a, a, a flat-fee MSP. And, um, and we had some challenges along the way. We did, we had our ups and downs. Um, and, and again, in 2016, it was something that I, I just felt like it was, um, it, it, it wasn't, it, it just, it just wasn't a good fit. It was, uh, again, it was, it was a very competitive market here in LA. So in 2017 was really uh, the game changer. And that's when we rebranded and we turned Intelsys from an MSP into more of a security focused MSP, right? So that's, uh, that's in 2017. And that's really the game changer. And um, what happened right after 2017 is we experienced just tremendous growth. We focused on MRR and in 2018, we had 275% increase in, in MRR. We went, to head, went head to head against some high profile companies um, like Jeff mentioned. Um, and then also in 2019, uh, we, we kept that growth. And then with COVID, we, we, we still grew, uh, not as much, but we, we had a 50% increase in, in new MRR. And right now, uh, just after February, just two months and 11 days into the year, uh, we've already added over 14,000 in new MRR. Um, and not to mention uh, in 
non-recurring revenue, we've already added 180,000 in, uh, in incident response uh, type of opportunities, which then dovetails into uh, an MRR uh, contract, right? So um, just a couple tips and just wanna share what's been working for us. Uh, we, do, we do outbound sales, we have inbound marketing and um, what, what used to work um, still works, just the effectiveness has, has gone down a little bit. Uh, so we, we compile outbound sales with, uh, with traditional marketing like, um, like direct mail. Uh, you'll get better results when you have a cold caller that's referencing a package or a letter that you sent to the CEO or to the IT manager. You, you, we, we, we tend to find uh, a better um, uh, conversation uh, rate uh, doing that. So uh, that works a lot better than just cold calling and uh, not having anything to reference. Um, so we do, uh, we, we, we do that, but we really focus on inbound marketing and I'll share a little bit more about that later, uh, but digital marketing really has been the, one of the biggest contributing factors to our growth. It's creating content. Um, we do a lot of organic SEO uh, from, from time to time, we'll do PPC. Uh, we've done a lot of video marketing. We do a lot of video blogging. And um, put, you put all this together, what's, what's been the biggest difference for our MSP um, is, is this. Let me, this is, I'm going to take you through a story here. So when you go through a more of a traditional sales approach, especially with IT, um, we would, whether it's inbound or outbound, you've got to have a really good well-defined sales process. Um, and on top of that, um, you're going to go through opportunities where you're going to present proposals. And sometimes those proposals will sit one to four to five, maybe to nine months, right? And they may not close. Um, for whatever reason, what was urgent is no longer urgent. And you're trying to talk to them about uh, why your MSP is different. And at the end, what happens? Some, some deals might close, but in our experience, a lot of them, we end up getting ghosted. And that's, uh, that was one thing that we wanted to change is how do we, how do we take control of the sales process? And, and, and what do we need to do to really differentiate ourselves from other MSPs? And this is, this is what we learned that when we focused on IT support, our sales cycle, cycle were, it was much longer. When we talked about cybersecurity, when we talked about incident response, it was less than 30, it was less than 30 days. There was more of a sense of urgency there. So what did, what did we do in our digital marketing system in our inbound marketing system? So some tips for you guys, for MSP owners out there is focus your keywords on cybersecurity. So instead of IT support in Los Angeles, we, we rank pretty high for cyber, cybersecurity in Los Angeles, for example. Um, some people call us the ambulance chasers of the cybersecurity world. Um, well, it, it, to a certain point, yeah, it does. I mean, we're, we're out there helping companies who need help today, um, not in six months. They need our, our services immediately. Um, so we focused a lot of our content for these type of SEO results. Um, as a result, uh, you'll find us on the first page of many, many keywords that's cybersecurity related on the first page of Google. Um, many of them were going to be uh, in the top three of that first page on, on organic uh, searches. So here's the difference. When you, when you combine digital marketing and cybersecurity uh, versus IT support, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but we get one call closes and it's, it wouldn't be uncommon where, where we get a prospect who calls us, uh, vets us real quick, does a quick Google search. And in two minutes we'll say, okay, we need you. And, and the, and this, and here's our sales cycle. This is, this is, this is our sales process. Okay, great. When? And they, and they'll say now. So I said, okay, I need a credit card. So we send them a, a, a sign up link. They put their credit card in get the uh, DocuSign the, the, uh, the agreement, and then we send a team out within two to four hours. And that leads to an MSSP MRR contract as well. So what's the difference here? 
So put yourself in a position where the difference is if you're going to the doctor for an annual physical and they say, oh, you know what, you, you have a spot right here. Well, you know, who knows if it's growing or not. It goes, you know, let me give you a referral to a dermatologist. You might just, you might postpone it for one month, six months, or you just might ghost that referral, right? But if you have a fractured leg or, uh, you know, something more severe, you're not going to go shop it around and you're not going to ghost that referral. You're, you're going to go see that doc. You're going to get it fixed, right? So that's one area where we've learned is we pivoted ourselves to find where is the greatest need and where is the greatest sense of urgency. And that's drastically increased our sales cycle from six months down to three months down now in some cases to two hours. So that's something that I'll leave behind with you guys. I can share more about that later. Uh, what you want to do is you want to create that relevancy and, that, and, and find that sense of urgency. So when you want to differentiate yourself with us, we lead with security. So these are the top three keywords that we optimize for. Cybersecurity companies, uh, IT in whatever city you're at, and ransomware. Um, now we're at a point where, where we've gone uh, statewide. So we don't just do cybersecurity in Los Angeles. Now we're doing cybersecurity in California. Um, we, we, we're, we're helping companies now throughout the state as well. Uh, on the MSP side, okay? So some, so these are the top two most common calls that we get, all right? So again, being an ambulance chaser or finding the greatest sense of urgency is ransomware. Ransomware by far is the number one calls that we get. And the second type of calls that we get is the business um, email compromise. Uh, those, those two keep us quite busy uh, on the MSP side. So. I know what some of you guys are thinking, you know, lead generation is, is hard, um, but how about my current clients? So yes, and you know what, your current clients right now are, are great. They, they pose a liability for, from, for you, which I'll explain to you, uh, a, little, a little bit here, but also they, they present great opportunity, okay? So some people call it the birds and the bees talk uh, because it is uncomfortable, um, and this is a great time for you to do this during a QBR. And that's, that's the talk that you need to have with your clients is number one, you want to minimize your liability. Okay. Because in, in many of the cases that we get calls, it's not their first time, at least the ones who sign up with within the same day, it's not their first time that they got hit with ransomware. It's typically the second or third time. So we already know who our prospects are. If it's the first time I, it, it, the likelihood of that closing is, is probably very, very small. But if, it's, if they tell me it's the second or third time, I, I know I have a shot of being able to help them pretty, pretty immediate. Uh, so you want to minimize your liability because this is what I hear when, I, when, I, when I'm talking to them and I go through my discovery questions. So, so what happened? Why is it your third time? What's going on? They, this is very common. They usually say, well, we trusted our MSP. They're great guys. And we thought our MSP had us covered. Okay. So that's where you want to minimize your liability, not only from an insurance perspective and legal perspective, but from a revenue perspective, because now you're going to have that, you're going to have an opportunity to lose that revenue. So minimize your liability, have that tough talk with them. The other one is we all know hackers will get into all your SMB clients. I mean, if they can get into SolarWinds and other companies, I mean, they're going to get into SMB clients and, and we see it all the time. So the question is, how prepared are you? Okay. And who has your back? What vendors, what partners has your back? And that's one of the differentiators that you're going to have the opportunity to have today is how easy it is to have an MSSP who is, who's, whose focus is on the, MS, uh, on the MSP channel how we can help you do that, all right? So here's the opportunity, all right? So you, you do have a choice and success is not an accident. It's, 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 a, it's a choice. So I'm sorry if I have to use this word because I personally don't like it, but I just couldn't figure out another word. I feel like with the pandemic, it's been 
overused is pivot. Like we all got to pivot. Um, but, but that's the best thing I can think of because in our company, we've pivoted three, four, three to four times um, in the last 10 years. So now what are you going to do? Are you going to do something or are you going to do nothing? All right. So oh, nothing subliminal about that at all. All right. So uh, ask yourself, what are you going to do? Okay. So what does a pivot look like in, in today's MSP competitive race to zero market? What, what does it look like? Well, let me give you an example, all right? Um, as we all know, Amazon today is not what Amazon looks like 20 years ago. What was Amazon doing 20 years ago? They were selling books, right? They were selling a lot of books and they dominate the market and they put a lot of bo local bookstores out of business. But you fast forward, and you don't even have to fast forward 20 years. You can, you can, you can fast forward 12, 15 years, and what did they do? They created AWS, right? And now the rest is history. So if you, I mean, I'm not a stock analyst, I'm not a financial analyst, but if you look at their, um, if you look at their books, if you look at their financials, I really doubt that their sales from their bookstore is a significant uh, contributor to their bottom line. Um, and in fact, I, I, AWS, AWS has been one of the growth stories in, in their business. Um, another brand that you guys are very familiar with is Apple, right? What was, what was Apple known for 20 years ago? I mean, they were a great competitor to PCs, right? I mean, they, they made amazing computers and what do they, what, what contributes to their bottom line now that's really a game changer? It's their phones. And it's been like that for who knows how long, the last seven, eight years, right? Or even more. But looking, so that's, that's a pivot that they've done. What's another pivot that they're looking to do now that they already started two and a half years ago? Services. So Apple in another year or two is not going to look the same as today. Uh, you're going to see, I mean, you're going to see their business pivot again. So again, I'm not an expert with uh, stocks and, and, and companies, but just from the outside, these are things that, that, I, that we all should pay attention to. And as a small company, we could do the same. I mean, especially if you have competitors in the same building, or if you don't, I'm sure you have competitors across town, 20, 30 minutes away. We're in a very highly competitive market. So how are you going to differentiate yourself? From, from others, okay? So here's the result, right? So when we started off as a break fix company, I mean, we, we were okay. I, I just, it just wasn't a business that I saw uh, two, three, four X growth uh, potential, okay? So we switched over and, and became an MSP and we did, we did okay. But again, it, it wasn't like we were able to grow by two, 300%. And that's when we pivoted to becoming more of a security-based, uh, security-focused MSP, and, and really now more of an MSSP. And that's really when things took off. So I, I really encourage you guys to, to, to look into that, and, um, and, and you'll have the opportunity later today to, to really ride our coattails in the words of some of our partners there. Um, so uh, what, do you, what are you gonna choose, right? Are you gonna be a security-focused MSP? Um, and you don't have to be an MSSP, you really don't. And we have partners who are, who, who really want to be hands off and, and they want to be more of a security focused MSP and really have a slight differentiator and, and lead with security um, to get more business. So you can do that as well. So there's choices that we, that we can offer you um, as well. So yes, yeah, CyberX can help, all right? So what, is, uh, what are some of the things that we can help you with? Um, to get started, we offer SOC as a service, um, MDR and SIM. Uh, we'll go into detail about that. Some of the things that we're not gonna talk about today, I'll, I'll go ahead and mention it, um, is uh, we can help you with incident response um, and we can also help you with cybersecurity compliance like NIST and CMMC, right? Uh, in regards to our SOC as a service, it's completely white labeled, completely turnkey for you to be able to brand yourself as a uh, security uh, focused MSP or a security leader in your market. Uh, we, 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 and, and we'll completely back you up on, on, uh, on the services for that. Um, so that, again, this is, uh, well, this is one of the uh, 
um, the quotes that I, I, I put into um, our slides. So um, our, my slides are, are very fresh. Uh, I just updated like uh, five, 10 minutes ago. Roy calls me uh, uh, Mr. Last Minute or uh, Mr. Just in Time. So um, so uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Eric. He's a um, Accelerator Club member for TMT. Um, so CyberX, and I can't even spell my own company. I should be fired. Um, we have your back. And um, our MDR team um, consists of uh, uh, threat intelligence analysts. We have ethical hackers, um, incident handlers, and of course, this, uh, the CISSP that everybody is trying to go for. Um, so, so you are going to be back with some of the most experienced security professionals um, in the industry. Um, here's, uh, here's another testimony that we got from uh, a while back. Uh, Nick Stango, your team is great. They're extremely quick. That is priceless. Keep up the good work. All right. So I want to share this with you because I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from our partners about how to package um, uh, security and how to make it as turnkey as possible. So when you talk about a security layer, you're, you've got to you've got to deal with with a lot of uh, uh, different vendors from time to time. Um, I I did edit this. I I had uh, specific vendors in here, and and some of those competitors complained and threatened me and stuff. So. I took their names out, but you can probably figure out who some of these vendors are uh, and, and who, who, who the leaders are in the industry. Uh, when you become a partner, we can go into more detail about this. Um, I just probably shouldn't mention their names uh, when it's being recorded, but I can, I'll, I'll be happy to tell you who are, uh, who, are the, who are the experts in each of these uh, categories. But with CyberX, um, this is what we call the minimum security offering. At the very minimum, to be security focused, is to focus on these security layers, having next-gen AV at the minimum, um, having an endpoint detection and response, um, having user B, uh, UBA and NTA. I'm, I'm not gonna go down the list, but this is the minimum. And in order for you to do this, at least for our MSP, when we started doing this three years ago, we did have to engage seven different vendors. And without breaking any, um, NDA agreements, um, those are not our prices. I mean, that's, those are just things that we found on the website. Um, for us, because we had a little bit more volume, um, our effective cost was right under $50 to do the entire stack. So we were, we were up at like $48, $49 was our cost to provide the minimum security to, uh, to our, our clients. Um, what we've done and how we partner with Signet, we've been able to do all this uh, and offer it to our MSSPs for 1250. And we do have a TMT uh, special um, at the end of this that will cut that uh, quite a bit. So if you stay till the end, I'll, uh, I'll show you what, what, uh, what we've done for, uh, for, for people watching uh, uh, this webinar, all right? Um, so, so we do offer several, so we, we have a lot of SKUs. And one of the things that we're gonna highlight today is how do you get in this minimum security offering. Um, and the platform of choice that we use for this, we chose Signet. And because we are an MSP, uh, we built the MSSP from scratch. And I, because, because we were already offering security to our clients, um, we had the luxury of being able to say, you know what, how do we consolidate this all in-house? Do we build it ourselves? Or do we find a partner to, to help us do this? So I already had security analysts in-house um, and they helped with the vetting process. So why did we choose Signet? Because it was comprehensive. But not only that, but it was preferred by my internal SOC team. Um, they, they, they went ahead and evaluated um, a lot of those vendors and we determined Signet. Um, we, what they found is uh, there's a lot of, they had one of the least amount of false positives and also false negatives. And that, that cuts down on alert fatigue. And many of you have heard that term uh, because a lot, of, uh, a lot of what we've experienced in the past is um, malicious uh, activity that goes unnoticed, right? People talk about false positives and having alert fatigue for false positives, but nobody really talks about the false negatives. A false negative is when, when the EDR just doesn't even detect it, 
or it detects it as a medium or low severity and nobody checks it out and it just sits there until it dials back uh, to some CNC server and the next thing you know, it's too late. And that's actually happened with us before with, with a couple of the vendors that we've uh, used in the past, which is one of the reasons why we led, that led us down this path. Um, so imagine being, yeah, I mean, uh, imagine being in that position, it was not fun. So what we realized with Signet is, is with these false neg, uh, they have a very few amount of false negatives and it shows up on a dashboard where our SOC analysts can perform manual analysis on those. So it's, it's really great to have that visibility. Um, and same thing with the, the forensic analysis, it, it, a great visibility on that. So uh, what else? So it's very comprehensive. It consolidates multiple vendors into one platform, including creating honeypots, um, having a, de a deception technology deployed. So these are all some of the small benefits and features that, that I'll highlight. Uh, Roy can, can, can share with you a lot more about, um, about the platform and, and, um, and he's up next. But um, uh, so this one again is, is, is fresh. Um, I'm not gonna go into this, but uh, they are a large MSP. Um, they actually started off as a uh, as a um, ILEC and an ISP, and now they're 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 changing and they're adding MSP to their business. Uh, they have about 150 um, uh, in-house staff there. All right, so um, I will turn it over to Roy, um, who is uh, going to elaborate a little bit more about uh, who Signet is and uh, uh, how how they're positioned in the market. Um, and um, he's, Roy's just an amazing guy. We, we get amazing support from the Signet team and from, from Roy's team. So uh, Roy, go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, I'll share uh, the same slides where France uh, stopped. And again, thank you everyone for uh, joining. Yep, we're now on a full screen. Um, so of course, we're very excited. Uh, we're nearly a year with this partnership with uh, CyberX, which is one of our biggest MSSPs. Uh, in the States and even worldwide. Uh, the team, the communication is something that we're thrilled with every day. Uh, it is a pleasure working with them together. Uh, and a little bit about us. So I believe most of you do have any type of endpoint protection. We talked about it. And Signet is uh, a vendor that is positioned in what you're hearing today in the market as called as an uh, XDR, an extended EDR, which is exactly where the endpoint uh, protection solutions are going or the industry is going to. And usually I uh, prefer starting a little bit, taking you back a couple of years, just to uh, show you the evaluation, evolution, sorry, of the endpoint space and how basically we got to date from an EDR to an XDR. What is the main pain points that we're here to solve and why there is mainly today a need. At the end of the day, like any other vendor, it's a game of uh, uh, Academy Mouse. The bad guys are developing over, uh, over time. They're becoming much more sophisticated and the attacks and the vectors of attack is something that we need to uh, address. So uh, they're giving us a hard time. We're giving them back as security vendors, go on and go forth, never ending story at the end of the day. Taking you back a couple of years, everyone knew that in the 90s, we started with the AB antivirus, very known signature based, usually once a week, once a two week was updated on the database. The vendors were competing who has a bigger database of signature uh, <coughs> viruses that were detected very fast, took them less than three and a half, four years to move to a next generation AV, NGAV. Today, it's even a, a common term as well. Uh, it's a component that most even EDRs have it, which is a must, of course. A little bit more advanced on next gen AV. It wasn't only weekly, and it has some more gaps closure on security features that the traditional AV didn't provide. Easily it went forward three uh, years, two and a half, three years from that next gen AV vendor uh, uh, diagnostic to the endpoint protection space. The endpoint EPP is uh, an endpoint protection solution really provided much more holistic approach to it. That is really becoming to more persistency of threats, even malware that started on those times, that was the late 90s, I believe all of you uh, uh, do remember that and even adding some capabilities of device, the device control, blocking USB or external devices as well, which was a need comes to the industry of the uh, uh, <laughs> DLP as well. 
Then it moves to a next generation endpoint protection. Everything has a next generation, like firewalls. I believe we are now talking about an XDR two years from now, next generation XDR. It's funny how the industry works, but really the next generation endpoint was really a different approach. That was really the most advanced feature on the time, the beginning of the twenties, including behavior analysis and detection, machine learning, AI, much more heuristic approach to address much more uh, persistency of uh, threats and attacks. And then it moved to an EDR because we saw that blocking or a single action today doesn't cut it. And EDR vendors are great out there. There's many of them in the industry, and I believe most of you even have uh, an EDR as part of your stacks that you're providing today. Basically, the EDR is providing a couple of playbooks or actions in a, a series of a flow that are performed when there is any type of uh, detection of an event or uh, uh, activity in the network. Uh, oops, sorry for that, well, moving this over here. So uh, basically, why is the industry now in the need to move from an EDR? And what exactly do we see in our day-to-day -day calls that MSPs are asking themselves? Does your EDR provide sufficiency and visibility and protection? I believe all of you know that security starts in visibility. And we do see that great EDR vendors in the industry today are providing a great next-gen AV capabilities and the endpoint detection response is very good there. Some of them have nice playbooks built in, but to be honest, what Signed is offering in the industries today is that not only two layers or uh, uh, engines, security engines of protection are enough. The threats are much, much more advanced. They're moving to a network. We need the next-gen AV, we need the EDR, which is of course, but today, Methods of attack like lateral movement and DNS tunneling, reconnaissance port scanning and many more is day to day on each types, even from the malwares, not even the ransomwares, but ransomwares by far, they start with that, the uh, scan on the network. We see that today, the attackers are basically much more sophisticated. They are coming in disguise. So they can be in a disguise of a user and it can be from various uh, uh, events. Franz even mentioned that the second vector that he's looking today for ransom is email protection today. So it can be disguised by email. Every one of you knows phishing, sometimes can be a legitimate URL domain, and sometimes even behavior can be as a user. So out of the ordinary activities by a user, and more advanced than that is a need for entity. All those DLLs and PowerShells, which I believe most of you know, PowerShell can be easily a legitimate operation on the network or can be a bad one. The only way to define if a PowerShell is good or not in other vectors is basically to understand who, what, when, where, and how. That is an extremely important uh, feature to have today. And this detection layer is a must, especially for advanced ransomwares today. Emetet, for example, which in uh, the last two and a half years, we see a new vector in the United States of Emetet more advanced running. That is exactly how it operates. Deception technologies, honeypots, basically, 100% designed for uh, ransomwares, putting those traps. When we analyze and see how ransomware operates, we understand that when it penetrates a network, the first thing that it looks is stuff that it can encrypt and puts a hand on. It doesn't encrypt everything end to end. It first looks to put their hand on some assets and resources that can be valuable, that can be negotiable, that someone will pay for them, that there will be any claim for ransomware here. Deception technologies automatically generating decoy shares, files, hosting users, putting some small traps. Another thing that we're asking today, and mainly MSPs are asking regarding EDR, do they provide automation today in playbooks that really eliminates the threats? And this is one of the biggest challenges that traditional EDRs today. We're seeing that EDRs mainly covers the host and the file pillar, but today attacks are going on the user and the network pillar as well. And the built-in actions can be the leading quarantining, killing process, running scripts or isolation, unisolation, and many more, but they're very simple. They're not enough. They sometimes, the required playbook to address, especially ransomware, those capabilities are not good enough today, especially not when we're talking on entity. What is the XDR and what we are offering today? First of all, the full coverage of the four fundamental pillars we talked about user files, host and network, but much more. What about the firewalls, proxies, active directory, traffic, DNSs, changing ISPs, restarting, disabling or enabling processes and services, access and users, oops, sorry for that, many more. Those are things that we require. Just giving an example over here, we need from a solution today, 
that the playbook will be by far much more advanced. We needed to kill a process to disable a user, sometimes isolate the host and disable inputs, blocking RDP, which is usually a traffic that is generated in the network. Maybe a user now on the AD needs to be disabled. Why? Because every ransom has a persistency technique that we want not only at the first layer of the ransom attacks that we detected, we want to avoid any presence and persistency that is running on. By doing so with such an advanced playbook, basically we can ensure that the persistency will not impact the network. A very important, oops, uh, thing here, <laughs> a little bit zoomed in, is basically uh, that it provide today the accuracy and investigation and response actions. So are the actions that we provide today from the EDR? Looking at them today, EDRs, great ones, providing alert based and files and host remediation based actions. Today, security, as Franz mentioned, start with visibility. And he talked about the challenge having a couple of, uh, a couple of tools today and the, that their SOC team of CyberX evaluated us on that. Basically looking at all the tools, getting all the insights together, sometimes is a challenge to understand exactly what is going on on the client's network. And there can be best of breed great ones. But today, do you have the manpower? Do you have the ad hoc and expertise to understand from all the tools in real time across the network to correlate an event? One of the best things that uh, XDR platforms today and Synets as well, for example, is the incident view, showing you a flow, a view with wording description, simple words, what exactly is happening, not the beats and the bytes and the codes uh, and the zero and the one numbers. We want to understand in wording what is happening, which, what is the flow, and what is the automation remedi remediating it. <laughs> Last and not least, one of the biggest uh, uh, values in this partnership with CyberX, and one of the reasons that Cyber uh, that Synet chose to partner with CyberX, is the capabilities of MDR services, which is a combination of their team's expertise and ours together. It's, we can be the best vendor in the world. We can have the best technology. Our approach and CyberX approach on that is that with all the respect to any tool, any automation, doesn't matter which vendor, human intervention at the end of the day is a must as part of an offering. And you need the teams and expertise. Many MSPs are great, but they need, they have a lot on the plate. IT services, Outlook, switches, routers, firewalls, proxies, the whole works. And what about security in advanced one? What type of vectors? It's an ongoing. You need a team that will support you, have a 24 seven eyes on the glass on the system, see, and when there is something, they will be with that. We have a 24 seven MDR team. And the reason that we partnered with CyberX is that most of the cases, our team is working with them together, the combination of the expertise. In some cases, you'll see CyberX team assisting you with a full IR if needed part of the offering. And it's a service that they can provide as well. Feel free to reach out after this call to France. He'll talk about his IR services. But report and investigation. Maybe your clients are under uh, uh, any type of compliance or regulation. France mentioned CMMC, for example, many more. I'm back. Did it fell for a second? The internet? Yeah, just 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 for about for that. Five, five seconds, seconds, Roy. Yeah, it's okay. So the team of expertise we provide with them together is all good. And most EDRs don't have it embedded. It's additional fee, or they combine with a third party great MDRs uh, vendors in the industry. But why not have it all consolidated? Last and not least, the deceptions that we talked about, the honeypot. Today, no EDR vendor in the industry provides even not XDR honeypot technology. There are great ones, very, very active. And honeypot today is something for the mid or high enterprise accounts. Why not make it something that is affordable because it's a huge need today uh, for the uh, uh, small and medium, not only the high and enterprise accounts. And that is exactly um, uh, I think what you're we're doing. Fell off. No, I'm and good. I'm can you hear me? I'm I can hear you, but I don't see your screen anymore. Bear with me a second. Sharing, my apologies for that, everyone. Zoom, Zoom dropped that. There you no, go. I'm good. My apologies for that. 
So basically, this is the last slide before we move to a better internet connection over France. And basically, at the end of uh, uh, the day, uh, a consolidated platform is really uh, something that must contain prevention and detection capabilities, as mentioned before, next-gen AV, EDR, user identity behavior analysis, network traffic analytics, and deception. We need to have the system fully automated. And one of the best values with the CyberX team, the ability to tailor it and configure any playbooks that you want, or even policies manually or automatically on remediation actions, according to your client's need. Maybe you have a client that is on the health department, needs a different playbook or a different approach to it. Maybe some is financial, manufacturers, et cetera and the combination of the 24 MDR services with the 24 SOC and expertise of CyberX is exactly the reason why we partnered together. So I hope I didn't take a lot of your time and thank you everyone. And um, over to you, Franz. Roy, did you wanna talk about some of the latest rounds of uh, backing that you guys got? I thought that was really exciting. Um, yeah, of course, we'll be happy to share. So. Um, one of the most surprising uh, thing over here uh, is um, this wasn't expected. We announced yesterday that we had around C an investment of $40 million, uh, which is awesome and great for us. Uh, to be honest, not something the company was expected because May last year, we got another investment of $18 million. And although it's a lower number, in my opinion, it's a much more exciting one because taking back in the United States May last two year was the highest peak time of COVID. Uh, everything was unaware. For a company getting an investment of 18 million in that uh, time is something that for me, it's not my first uh, 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 Israeli company. I wouldn't say startup. We were over six years on the road. We're not a startup anymore, 180 employees worldwide. But for a company of investment, that is something that is uh, really out of the ordinary. We're extremely proud. The, uh, Growth net from 2019 in 2020 was 510%, mainly due to the partners. We're channel driven. So partners like uh, CyberX uh, is, uh, uh, we live and die for partners is what, why we grew. Got an attention of that uh, funding now of over $40 million. Uh, market revenue is uh, upcoming. We are uh, soon to be in a value of nearly $1 million. So we're excited for that. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I was, uh, um, I was looking forward to that. That pre, I mean, it, it's a great journey uh, to be able to grow with a company like, like Signet. And uh, I was waiting for that news and um, it, it, that, that happened really quick. So it was, it was really awesome to be a part of that. And, and um, uh, I, I guess I, I can't tell, I can't say so much about the inner workings of it, but it was a, it was a really exciting um, experience. So, here, here. Let me let me pull this up again because this seems like the ones uh, the one that um, a lot of our MSP partners um, like to see. So, um, so this is the minimum security offering that that any MSP should have to really differentiate themselves from the next uh, MSP across town. And we could do this, and we can help you do this. It's very turnkey. Um, we we can. I mean. I'll show you all the benefits in terms of configuration. There's nothing that an MSP really has to do. Um, we'll, we'll help you with, with uh, pre-sales, with sales calls. We'll help you with, with a lot of things. Um, so the TMT special that, we're, uh, that we have, here it is. So if you go to CyberX and Cyber, uh, it's with a three instead of E, okay, um, dash X.com and MSP dash win. This is something that not a lot of our competitors could do. And um, some people think that uh, we're crazy to do this because it's, 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 it's month to month um, and, and there's really no minimums, all right? So we're not putting you on a three-year contract like I wouldn't say some names out there, but some of our competitors, right? Um, or the minimum would be one year with a much higher monthly commitment. So with us, um, it's not only month to month, uh, and and we have we have we we have pretty much very little commitment, um, but also it's a lot more comprehensive. Okay, once you become a partner, and, and we'll give you we'll give you um, a, an overview of the dashboard. We'll give you a deep dive uh, uh, training as well, and then you'll see how much more comprehensive our minimum package is. This is our minimum package, 
And it, it, you'll see it's a lot more comprehensive than a lot of the, the competitors that you've probably already talked to out there. So this is a one-time special uh, for TMT and MSP success uh, uh, attendees. Uh, the first month is only $25. It's, it's what we call the kick the tires promo. You can cancel any time. Um, so for the first month, it's $25. You get 10 licenses you can use to, for anything you want. There's no difference between a core device um, or a, uh, a workstation, all right? Any additional uh, licenses above the 10 is, gonna, is only 850 instead of the 1250 uh, retail. And, um, uh, and uh, that's a type of not onboard, uh, 850 per license. And we also will help you with the white glove onboarding and configuration. Your team doesn't have to know how to configure uh, certain things. There, I'll address a question in, in the chat, but I saw something about Deep Instinct, for example. I mean, there's a lot of great tools out there, but does your who 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 who's in charge of configuring and managing that platform? So we're going to take that uh, work from your team. Your team doesn't have to do that. We will get it uh, configured for you properly and and show you how to deploy it. Okay. Um, after the first month, it's only two fifty. So it's not like again, it's not. Uh, um, Five hundred or seven hundred dollars um, minimum, two fifty per month with the ten licenses um, after the first thirty days. All right. So, um, well, how do you become more competitive? If you say, you know what, this is great, this is basic. So, this is what we would consider our MDR and SIM security offering. So, especially if you have opportunities out there that require this, um, that requires a, a NIST assessment or goes through CMMC maturity level uh, one, two, and three, uh, check out what we can help you with SIM. But the first thing is really get in the door, experience our MDR service, and it's a, it has such a low barrier of entry. It's, it's, it's some of our partners really say it's a no brainer. Um, if you wanna do our SIM, we can talk about that because SIM is a little bit more uh, complex uh, and there is a, a dual pricing structure because the cost for a core device is, is a little bit more uh, for firewalls and, uh, and servers. Um, and so we can, we can talk to you about that. When we were doing this and we were partnered with some pretty large co companies that you guys are probably partnered, some of you guys may have experience with, we, we combined that with, with other vendors um, and our costs in some cases were, were de again, depending on your volume, we, we had quite a bit of volume. So our cost was much lower than hundred dollars, but if you only have 50 or hundred endpoints, then you're probably gonna be close to that hundred dollar per endpoint to, to do everything on this stack. And we can help you do this at an average cost of about $25, uh, which, which is amazing. Um, and some of you might be like, you know what? piece of cake, what's next? Okay, well, what's next is to have a complete security offering. So once you're, once you're a partner, we'll, we, can, we can help you pivot to have a more comprehensive security offering, um, especially if, you're, if you have opportunities to meet level three um, CMMC maturity, where, you, where you're gonna have to focus on policies and procedures. Uh, you're gonna have to focus on, um, um, on people uh, because when you look at NIST, it's really, it's really um, um, people, process, and technology. Technology really is only 30%, 35% of that at the most. And the other piece is, 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 is the people and the, and, and the process. And we can help you with that as well. Okay? So something like this, if you go with a, a true MSSP that really knows NIST, um, it's gonna, and, and, and if you're a smaller MSP, it's gonna cost you over $200 per, per seat on average. And, and the reason why, why I say that is because many of them, they have what's, they, and, and we do this too. We do this on the MSP side. So, and, and, and that's one thing that I'll share with you guys is, is, is some of our strategies on the MSP side. We'll go in and we have a minimum fee. So typically our minimum fee, depending on the business and what the requirements are, it could be as, as low as like 1500, or it could be like 2500. And then what we'll do is we'll charge per device on top of that. And, and what that does is it gives them access to our SOC. So that's where you can really differentiate yourself. And that's where you can really grow your MRR is by not charging $250 per endpoint or $150 per endpoint. What you're doing is you're, 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 you're becoming more of an advisor and, and there's a flat fee that comes with the expertise. And, and you can make that 
in your margins because with CyberX, we're charging you 10 cents on the dollar for that. So very high margins for you, okay? So um, again, uh, there was a question, that how long did it take for us to pivot? Um, I, I can, I can, it, it really, it really depends on your staff and your expertise. How many vendors do you want to talk to? Are you the type of person who wants to get three quotes and three demos before you make a decision? If you do that, you know, you multiply that by nine different vendors for each one of those categories uh, that could take you 12 months to do. Um, in our case, we did, we did accelerate that process quite a bit. Um, but you know what, what we're talking about here is partnering with CyberX. CyberX can help you do that overnight. Okay, so we can take a lot of that legwork and overnight we can help you become more security focused and, and offer SOC as a service, MDR and SIM as well, all right? Completely white labeled and turnkey. And if you have any other opportunities with incident response, uh, we, had, we, 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 we had actually a couple, um, again, I don't like using this term because uh, some people take it the wrong way, but we had a couple one call closes uh, just this weekend um, I mean, basically, we were able to help them out with one call. We deployed a team out with incident response. And, um, and, and both of those calls that came in this weekend were from MSPs um, in, in different parts of California here. Um, and if you want to talk about cybersecurity clients, we do have um, RPO. We, we have registered providers on staff as well uh, for CMMC. So we can, we can talk to you about that as well. Um, and we can talk about uh, separation of duties and how to stay compliant with that because and I'm not going to go into I'm not going to go into that right now because that's that's another two hour conversation but um, Grant, sorry for interrupting we don't have a lot of time left but there's some very interesting questions on the uh, Q&A's in my opinion that maybe we'll leave some time to cover yes yes sure thanks Roy um, let me cover one more here in the uh, partner benefits is um, I'll leave this for you guys to read while I look at the uh, the Q&A here let me see here um, Franz, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask you the questions here so you don't have to read through each of them. Sure. Uh, Brandy was asking, this is an interesting question here, uh, how are you able to have a low cost for covering everything while other companies like piecing the items out? Yeah, so, so it's, it's all about streamlining. So um, there's a question about, can we work with Deep Instinct? Can we work with the, so we're, we've taken the Southwest approach where if, you, if you're familiar with Southwest, they stick to one plane, right? It's a 737. And all their engineers are, are certified and they, they all work on that 737. And when they need parts, they stock only for one plane to make it streamlined and efficient and cost effective. So that's what we've done as well is, is our engineers are, are trained on Signet, on Event Tracker. We, we only work with those type of tools. So we go, we focus on, um, on, on one platform and we go deep and, and, and we know how to configure it. We, we focus on that. Uh, it, everything's streamlined, making it more cost efficient. So um, again, like it's like the Southwest model, right? How, how can they offer flights for $29 or $79 uh, one way? So that's, it, we, it's the same model. That's a great question. Um, the other thing too, one thing is uh, if you've been on our webinar before, our cost was much lower. So we, we, as we continue to market this year, our, we are gonna be raising our prices. So once you get in today, you're gonna to be at least locked into this price for the next year. Um, so that's, that's something to note as well. We, 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 know, we know we're under market and we, have a, we, we could be raising our prices and that's, that's what we've been doing the last couple of months. So question that came in related to price on that is, is there a price break after a certain volume of licenses uh, or is everything just flat all the way across the board? It's flat right now. I mean, unless unless you come to us with um, uh, 500 seats and, and you do both uh, MDR and SIM, then yeah, definitely we, we can give you um, customized solutions or customized pricing for that. But um, typically anything under 500 and if you're just doing MDR, it's, it's just one straight price. And, and you, you talked about SIM. There was a question here about offering SIM and I, I believe what you had said before is that there's uh, a, a little bit more detailed conversation on that uh, around the appliance and device and, and how much it is on the, on the monthly cost. So that's probably something that they would want to talk one on one with you about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, just from our experience, we don't have any partners that just come to us just for SIM. Uh, most of our partners, uh, they, they, they have MDR. 
um, and, and our SOC service, and then they grow and get into SIM. Uh, SIM is, is, is very complex. Uh, it's a complex solution, but then it's, it's also very expensive. And it's, it's, it's something that, um, uh, I mean, we do have, I can't say we don't, but, but most of our partners don't just jump into, hey, I need, um, I need a SIM solution. So uh, we, we, we could definitely talk more about that in further detail. Yeah, in, interesting question from Brent that, that just came in here. What's, what's the typical size of client, especially now that you've made this, I, I know you hate the term of it, but you made the pivot to be in MSSP and these type of solutions. What's the typical size of client that you're providing services to, to, to now, or are your partners providing services to through CyberX? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it, it is all over the board and I'm switching hats to Intellisys now. Um, not CyberX. So for our end users on the on the MSP side, um, we 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 target we target typically customers with at least uh, 50, 60 employees and end users. Um, typically, that's what we target. But what comes in and who calls us? I mean, it could be a company with four people, um, and they're willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars because they have pending contracts um, that needs to be renewed. Um, but they need a SOC, they, you know, part of, part of the compliance, they, they need a SOC and they need SIM and they're willing to pay our, our minimum. So we do have clients as small as four, maybe five. Um, but I would say our bread and butter, the ones who, who, who make that decision within two hours, uh, most of those are typically going to be 50, 100, 180, um, 200, 250 endpoints typically. I do have one more question. Actually, there's two questions, a couple questions now that are popping up in here, but let me, before I do that, because I know we're a couple minutes after, Franz, why don't you give the, the URL again for your MSP win offer? Yeah, thanks. Um, so here it is again. It's uh, CyberX with the three, uh, cyber-x.com, MSP-win. All right, and again- Yeah, and I think, you know, Fr Franz and I were talking about this before the call and as we were prepping last week for it as well, is that he's really given a stellar offer here of 25 bucks is really what it is to be able to, to kick the tires and, and, and test it out. And so if you've got any interest whatsoever in being able to say, hey, you know what, is this the right fit for me? That there is practically zero risk. I took someone to lunch today and it cost more than 25 bucks. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's pretty much the cost of, uh, you know, a couple Starbucks runs uh, there, maybe one Starbucks run for your whole team to be able to just check this out and, and be able to see, I mean, great information that you had today on it to being able to see the solution, but that gives you that, that full month, that full 30 days here to be able to get in there, actually look at the tools, look at the solution, deploy some, uh, probably to, to some internal machines, uh, just to be able to see if we're, hey, is, is this the right fit for me? And, and during that 30 days, you can get every single question answered that you have about, about the service and, and how things are gonna work and what's the pricing is and everything else um, uh, here. Yeah, um, thanks, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, so part of that 30 days, there will be at least three calls scheduled, which uh, the first is the overview demo. And then the second call will be more of a deep dive technical demo um, where we will also enable certain features and configure the entire tenant for you. It is a multi-tenant system, which allows uh, a fantastic opportunity for you to, to roll up a lot of your, uh, your clients in. And then the third, the third um, uh, call is typically going to be more marketing and sales to help you uh, market that. Because by, that, by the third call, it's, it's the third or fourth week of the, uh, the 30-day period. Um, by that time, you're going to know uh, the value that we provide and, and how you want us to resell this. So I wish yeah, we had a and, little... And I was right. going to say, just, just to be clear on it too, is that the, because Vinka was asking about it here, the special is for really your, 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 your lower end offering. I don't know if I said that the right the way, your minimum level, security the offer in there. Yeah, it's the minimum package is the starter package. Yeah, it's a starter package. And so I would say for everyone, start with that just to be able to get in there and you can take a, a deeper look about CyberX. If, if you want one of those that are one of the, the, the higher end packages or you've got needs on that, then yeah. I, I'm sure Franz and the team can definitely help you to be able to, to figure all that out. 
And this, this is exciting. I wish we had a screen share of some of the people signing up. Um, since there are already people who signed up here, um, I do want to let you know. So as soon as you sign up, somebody from our team here within the next 24 hours will reach out to you with a calendar link for the first onboarding um, demo call. Um, so, so just to let you know the next steps, uh, this, that part of it isn't automated. So we'll go ahead and, and somebody will, will reach out to you. All right. So, uh, thanks for those who's, uh, who signed up already. Um, that's, that's very exciting to see that people signed up before we even ended the webinar. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you know, I, I wanted to make sure we got that because a lot of times people got to jump off and I didn't want them to miss that. Um, let's just hit a couple more questions here before we wrap up. Uh, Brett was asking a follow-up question. Are there verticals that you see more traction in? Um, so for our inbound leads, so um, yes, we do. It, it tends to be more construction related companies, not necessarily general contractors, but construction in general. So it could be um, demolition companies, it could be equipment leasing. Um, so we've seen a lot of that. Uh, and that seems like uh, a, a very underserved market. Um, so one of one of the companies this weekend was uh, construction, and my son, my son who's only twelve, pointed that out, and he's like, "Dad, you know, if you if you buy them all, you could be like Tesla and be vertically integrated." I'm like, "Wow, that's you're right. Actually, we could have a leasing company, a construction company, <laughs> and a demolition company." And anyway, but yeah, construction <laughs> to answer your question. That's that's one outlier. Yeah, and, and and I would imagine also is some some of it's going to be regional and and where you're at of of what that may be as well. Uh, right. There, a um, couple more here. Can you you mentioned this a little bit on one of the slides right before the one that you have up? But uh, uh, can can you help us with CMMC requirements and be part of our team to handle CMMC? Yes, yes. So that's part of the pre-sale support and sales calls. So our uh, registered providers will be able to get on these uh, pre-sale calls, uh, pre-sales support calls. Um, uh, we can support you with pre-sales calls. That's what I'm trying to say. So yes, we could, we could help you with that. Um, in fact, Eric, uh, the one who, who provided testimonial, um, he's kept us really busy. He's, he's had several opportunities already come in uh, for CMMC in his area. And, um, or, or, I mean, CMMC is really new. Uh, most of it's still NIST. Um, so we can, we can definitely help you with that. And Eric's one of our fastest growing partners um, in, in Accelerator Club. Well, and I would say as part of it, I mean, you, you're, you're fully on, on that of sales support and helping to be able to win these deals. And I know Hazem's got a, a question this uh, about pre-sales process, but you're, you're fully on the same page as everyone is that you, you grow as, as your partners grow uh, here. Absolutely. Uh, and and yeah. so you, you are in lockstep with them on wanting to make, be able to make sure that they grow nothing in your pricing model or anything else uh, encourages you just, just to sit back and, and collect checks on things that people aren't using, uh, right. which is not always the case. I, I mean, that, that's not the model of everyone out there, but yours is really, you know, you, you can tell that you developed it from the mind of an MSP that was on the other side of it, uh, of how you would want it to be, uh, is, is that you are fully on the same page with, with all of your partners uh, yeah. that, that, that are out there. Absolutely. I had a slide in here and I'm not sure which version that was, but yeah, one of the slides in there is it, we, I, it was a win-win. I mean, it's gotta be a win-win because, um, and that's why I was flipping through the slides is, is what's in it for, for MSPs, right? You guys, you guys are business owners. You guys want to grow your business. You want to grow your MRR. You want to provide jobs for your employees. You want to provide um, a financial fr uh, freedom for your, for your uh, family. So, how do you do? I mean, do you want to stay and, and be, be an MSP provider and, and, and uh, be involved with the race to zero? Or do you want to uh, really step it up? And, and I know that's what's in it for most of you, because that's what because I am an MSP, like what Jeff said. And I, I love the, the community. I love helping and giving back to to give you guys tips on how you can grow your business. I know you guys all want to grow your business and that's what's in it for you. And I'm sure there's others as well. Uh, what's in it for CyberX is, is uh, take us along. I want to grow with you guys, um, and and for us, it's 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 been it's been amazing to see some of our partners grow. Um, being able to help with landing pages, we work with with Vertical Action and Pronto, so uh, we 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 love doing the marketing piece for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are more technical operators and technical owners, so um, if you're a partner with us, we'll help you with the landing pages. We we know 
we, we know the, the templates, we know what to, what to put uh, specifically for keywords. We can help you um, uh, get that out. If you guys want to do webinars, uh, we can show up and we could, we're not going to be CyberX. We're going to be whatever um, MSP you're with. So um, if you want to do webinars, we can, we can help you with that as well. You want to do some LinkedIn marketing, um, we, we, can, we, can, we can support you and help you grow. And, and that to me is a win-win because again, as an MSP, that's what's in it for me as an MSP, which I can only relate if you're an MSP like me, that's, that's what's in it for you. Yeah, let's do, let's do rapid fire. We've got three questions left here and I know we're running quite a bit over uh, on it, but I wanna get these. Um, John was asking, do you have anything to handle the email side of things for anti-spam, antivirus, anti-phishing? Yeah, yeah, we do. So that's in, that's rolled up in our uh, complete uh, package. So we, we do have MSPs as well that uh, that that sign up for this complete security offering. It's not sixty sixty five dollars is if you have ten endpoints, but we can talk about how many endpoints you have, and and and, and we'll make sure that you can make a profit of at least sixty uh, percent. Okay, maintain a sixty percent margin. Sixty percent equates to about two to three x on markup. So don't get markup and margins mixed up. But yeah, this is the complete package. If I had a stylus right now, I would highlight email protection. It's about uh, 70, 80% of the way down there on the left-hand side, yeah, uh, right above security awareness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. If, if, they've, if they've already got next-gen antivirus installed, should they remove it before deploying, deploying CyberX or will I'll your solution that. run side by side? That answers that. Great question, by the way. We hear it a lot. So first of all, no, no need to remove. Uh, easily can work with any third party. Basically, the check marks that the CyberX team can do for you. After that being said, only one thing will need it. The CyberX uh, team will do it for you as well, just to whitelist sign it. So you won't get too much noise or double alerts. Um, Process-wise, we are very light. Wouldn't uh, find any logic on doing so. Basically, you're paying twice and having two engines already of next gen A be embedded. One will be in a disabled mode, but if you have any existing contract or something like that, at the end of the day, we found out every, literally everyone, at the end of the day, did a little bit of transmission mode, months or two with the existing uh, next gen AV they had. After that, easily left it, no need for another solution, which you have it already, and not paying double for it. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, Excellent. that's part of the configuration. Again, that Southwest model, our, 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 our analysts and engineers are already a pro at configuring things for you. So we can help you, um, especially during the first 30 days, uh, you don't have to remove that. We, yeah, I mean, on the incident response, for example, we, we had a large 400 employee private jet company um, that had a industry leading a, in next gen AV and they still got hit with ransomware. We went in there, they didn't feel comfortable leaving it out even though they, hit, they, got, they got hit with ransomware with it on. So I don't know how effective it was and is. Um, we showed them how to whitelist it. We configured everything properly and, and we helped with that, uh, with that IR. But yeah, we can help you with that. All right, fin final question that I've got on here. Hazem was asking about it. I referred to it before. I think this is a great place to, to end because I think this is one that sets, sets you guys apart and, and Fran sets it apart of, of just with your leadership and what you've done with your uh, IntelliSys business. Uh, what's the pre-sales process you can provide us to help us secure the first set of anchor clients uh, on the solution? Yeah, that, that's, that could be a trick question. I have two answers. My first one is look, look what's under your nose, meaning your existing clients. Um, I have three different scenarios and three different scripts that I can work with you on for your existing clients that we've done and that we've shared with our, our partners. And you, you're, if you're not already offering security or if you want to step it up, one of your best clients could be your anchor clients. And we can show you how to cross sell, upsell, and, and implement a full security stack for that client. Um, that is the lowest hanging fruit. That right there can immediately help you increase your MRR um, or at least help you get that anchor client. Um, the, the second answer, if you don't like that answer, <laughs> the, second, the second answer is we can, we can help you, um, uh, we, we, do, we do, I won't get too much into digital marketing, but, but I can, we can help you for free uh, with certain keywords and, and, and how to position some of those keywords um, to be able to get some of those inbound uh, leads. Um, so, I mean, we have a done for you service. I'm not going to go there, but we, I can give you some tips 
Okay. Um, I, I want to see your staff and, and what, what your current process is like, and there's no need to overhaul your process. We can, we can plug in certain keywords and, and enhance your sales process to include some inbound leads uh, so that we can help you get that anchor client. Um, so I, I hope that helps. I like my first answer better because um, that's, you know, some, sometimes the best opportunities are right under your nose. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is always the best place to start, even if you yeah. don't think you have opportunities, uh, is going there. The, the worst thing that happens is that you get the opportunity to, to, to pitch it uh, and get turned down, but you've got some, some sales reps in there to be able to, to, to go through and, and, and go through your presentation on, on someone that's already friendly to you. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the worst case. The best case is they actually see the value uh, there and and sign up for it, upgrade to what you have uh, here. And it, and it sounds like you've, you've got white label literature to, to send yep. out to uh, pitch to clients and all of those. So that's actually one of the most popular um, marketing materials that we have uh, because it's, uh, it's, 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 you can plug it in. If you have uh, email marketing or you, or you want to do manual marketing, whatever it is, you can just plug it in, copy and paste, make sure you read it. Um, and it does talk about um, whether you just want to offer the MDR or you want to include the SIM in there. So uh, there's different, there's, like I said, there's three different scenarios that you can just uh, copy and paste. Uh, so that's, that's something that we can uh, share with you guys. All right, excellent. Well, thank you guys for, for taking the time here. We had so many questions. We ran 15 minutes over, but uh, a lot of great questions from out there. So I appreciate all of you there. We'll also get this posted up if you need to show it someone else on your team and we will get a link out to everyone with a link to the recording. So uh, if, if this is something, make sure Franz, one, one last time for anyone, if they didn't get signed up already, it's right there on the screen. It's cyberx.com slash MSP dash win. 25 bucks. That is all you are risking by signing up. I'm sure if you really twisted Franz's arm, he would give you the 25 bucks back if you thought it was a waste of time uh, there. So, you know, it really is just that that great marketing offer to be able to, to, to get you to try it out, check it out and, and, and see. And, and hey, there's there's pretty much zero risk to, to do so uh, with that. So Franz, Roy, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it uh, here and, uh, you know, well, we'll see all of you on the next MSP Success webinar. Thanks all. Thank you, Thanks, Jeff. Guys. Thank you, everyone. Always a pleasure with the TMT community. Yes. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Win some deals today, guys. There we go. Bye -bye. Good luck.